Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. And our model today is Ijon. And we're going to take a look at the Ursa Mini Pro 2. Versus the Airy Amira. <laughs> it's like $600 versus $45,000. Six, six thousand six thousand. Did I, did I say <laughs> 600? Both of these cameras have been out for a while now. Um, yep. But I've, I've been wanting to do a test this whole time. Just haven't been able to put it together. And I'm excited. I think it's important to look at picture quality. Just see what the picture looks on each of these. This does shoot raw. And so some great frame rates with this camera. You can get 120 with no crop. That's 4K, 120 frames a second, which is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Or with a crop. You can do 150 uh, in 4K or uh, 300 in HD. 300 in HD, but that's got to be a crazy crop. Yeah, a tiny little. Tiny little yeah. <laughs> so. This will do up to, up to 60 frames in 4K, and it'll do uh, up to 200 frames in 2K not cropped, which is kind of nice. So on the mirror, can you do an SSD card? Can you, can no, you no, record no. So out to an the, SSD card? The only recording option for this is CFast. Uh, for that, you have CFast or SD or SSD. But I mean, ultimately the question is, is there a huge difference between a $6,000 camera and a $45,000 camera? So on this test, we're doing a series of these. There'll be three different videos. So you'll see the same setups in the three different videos. We're gonna compare several different cameras. But let's get started with the Ursa Mini Pro 2. And the Area Mira. So let's get started, see what we can do. All right, so this first test we're doing is our just general picture quality test. I want to take uh, these cameras and just make them look as nice as possible. I think the Aerie Mira looks pretty nice out of the box. I did add, you know, I threw the Aerie Rec 709 LED on there, added a little more contrast, removed some of the green, and then I basically kind of just tried to match that with the Ursa Mini, and they both turned out pretty good. They both look very nice, although the skin tone and just the overall tonality of the uh, Amira is just, it's really very pretty. It's a little more crunchy with the uh, G2. You know, and you look at the foliage, the, the leaves in the background, they're not as green no, they're definitely as, not. as the uh, Amira. And then look at her pants. The blue in her pants is so much richer in the Amira. It really is. The color is much richer. It's a pretty amazing picture on both, well, the Amira is a gorgeous picture. Really, the Amira, that whole airy line is kind of the standard of the industry yeah. and, and what everyone yeah. is, is aspiring to. And I think the uh, it can I mean, the G2 is looking pretty dang good. I mean, we should note the Amira is 3.2K upscaled to 4K, mm -hmm. and the Ursa Mini is 4.6K um, that we've, you know, downscaled to 4K. Downscale. And, and to me, there isn't a very perceptible difference in the resolution. If you took both files and blew them up, maybe you could find a slight difference in the image. But overall, I think they're, you know, I wouldn't worry too much about the resolution if you're thinking about cutting them together. Yeah. Okay, on this test, it's our mixed light test. And we really, this is like <clears throat> a situation you face all the time. We've got outside light, you've got inside light, you've got tungsten light. The light we have on her is a little bit warm. And then we've got a little bit of warmth coming in the door. And then, of course, the outside light coming through the window. So it gives us a variety to look at there. And really, I mean, again, both these cameras look excellent in this situation. But overall, they look very similar. And that was purposeful. I, try, I tried to, you know kind yeah, of get them close imagine. to each other, make them look When you can nice. make an argument for both of these, as far as yeah. color goes, yeah. you can make an argument on which one you like best, you know, yeah. and that's the thing about these types of, you know, when you start looking at color, it's a matter of where do you like it, where do you want to push it, what's yeah. more important to you. Very subjective. Mm -hmm. But both really nice looking images. All right, so the dynamic range test here, uh, we're starting at, this image is properly exposed to her face, which we metered with a light meter. Um, I think it was an F22, and then we have some NDs in and, mm -hmm. and things to knock that down. It already starts out at normal. You, you just see you're holding that concrete a little better with the uh, Amira. The Ursa yeah. Mini Pro uh, G2 is just a little bit brighter, but a little bit darker in the shadows. I mean, they're, so that's normal. So this is, let's go to uh, plus one. Now, her skin in this is plus one stops, but that concrete behind her is probably like plus five or plus six. So we should start to see that blow out pretty soon here. Overall, I have to say that the Ursa Mini has kind of a warmer look, has like mm -hmm. a warmer wash to it. Now, here at plus two, we're seeing that concrete start to blow out on the Ursa Mini. Yeah, definitely. It's getting there on the Amira. There's less detail in it now, but it's still not clipping. It doesn't have that hard clip. But her face is still fine, plus mm -hmm. two stops. 
Isn't it though? It seems to me like on the Ursa Mini that it's uh, her face starting to get a little. Shadows are starting to block up a little bit. Mm, plus three stops. Well, yeah, they're both clipping on the concrete now. The area is blowing out on the concrete, and then the uh, Ursa Mini is just you know kind of blowing out more things. Yeah, they're both true. holding their color pretty well. They are. The, the red hasn't shifted very much. Mm -hmm. And her skin, even her skin that like gets with the dappled lighting, is still okay for both cameras. Mm-hmm. So this is plus four stops now. Whoa. Yeah, plus four stops is pretty nuclear. Yeah, the Ursa Mini G2 is like it's just it's gone. The, the grass is gone. The wall is gone. The sidewalk. I mean, just it's starting to posterize. The Amira is still holding still pretty it. strong. Trying to hang on. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's still definition in the image, you know. Yeah. It's whereas with the uh, Ursa Mini Pro 2, there's just no definition behind her. Yeah. Any of the highlights yeah. are just all gone. Yep. Uh, and then plus five stops. This is where traditionally the Airy will start to really, really lose it. The Airy is shifting green, isn't it? Yeah, it does seem to be and more it green. It looks like yeah. the uh, Ursa Mini G2 is shifting red. Yeah, it's got Pinkish. like a magenta, magenta thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like blown out. Her forehead's blowing out and everything. The Amira is, you, her skin that's in the direct sunlight now is is clipping. I'm amazed at how long it held on to those highlights. Well, even look at the green in the grass. I mean, it's still trying to hang on to, to some <laughs> yeah. detail back there. Yeah, it's amazing. So uh, these cameras generally don't like underexposure as much, especially the area. It can, you can throw as much light as you want at it, but if you starve it for light, it has a harder time. Under one stop doesn't seem to be too bad, though the shadows on her face do seem a little darker, you know? Don't have as much detail. Under two stops. It just starts giving you that, that sense. I mean, you start to see it in the transition between her hair and her forehead. Mm -hmm. Kind of starting mm -hmm. to get this red banding, the, mm -hmm. the red color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of noisy. And look at the dress. It's got all sorts of noise in it. The Amira, kind of same exact thing is happening, you know? Yeah, they're both they're both kind of falling apart in the same way. Minus three stops. The Amira is really really suffering here. Got a ton of grain in her face. Yeah, uh, yeah, and on the dress. The uh, Ursa Mini same kind of issue though. It doesn't seem to be as bad on the brighter side of her face. You yeah, know? but we are still holding a lot of detail in the darks. If you look yeah. at the trees and the leaves in the background, I mean, for yeah. us, as being you know this far by underneath, you know, minus three stop. And then minus four stops. Yeah, it's really bad wow. on the mirror. Super, <laughs> super the grainy. Shadows especially, they're, they're just, uh, you see the artifact, mm -hmm. you see it's, a, it's alive. Mm -hmm. um, the Ursa Mini, kind of the same thing. Yep. I, it got kind of hard at this point to separate her face from the rest of the shadows and, and introduce contrast in a way that didn't just have tons of noise everywhere. Oh, they're very similar. In very the similar handle. response with the shadows. Mm -hmm. I would say the Amira <clears throat> definitely has an advantage, obviously. But, you know, pretty impressive for uh, the price yeah. and where you position that camera, yeah. I'd say. And I would say the colors, you know, the colors held together pretty well. They did. Okay, so let's take a look at the ISO test with these two cameras. Uh, we're we're going to start like at 400, right? Yeah, which is really below the native ISO. So it's going to provide a cleaner image, but less dynamic range overall. Mm -hmm. Both these cameras start out re obviously really clean. And Very clean. The color looks good. Although the color on the Amira is more neutral and just the skin tone seems clean. And the Ursa Mini uh, is a little bit warm, but mm -hmm. I can't say I don't like the warmth because I kind of right. do Could like go the either warmth. Way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we have 800 ISO, which is their native. And, you know, you're going to see grain in this because that's just the way cinema cameras are. If you look at these darker colors in the checkerboard, in her face, it looks totally clean to me. I would say they look pretty much the same in they terms do. of noise structure, you know? Yep. So let's go to 1600 ISO. On a normal day, I wouldn't shoot past, this would be the top limit for me, for the Amira. 1600? Yeah. For the Amira? Uh -huh. I, I'm comfortable shooting at this, but I wouldn't go past it. But it looks really good. As long as you're properly exposing the image at this ISO, you should be fine. And then for the Ursa, it's kind of the same deal. I would actually say it seems like the Ursa has more detail. 3200, you really start to see the grain on the Amira. You could still shoot this, probably, as a look. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> look, look like film, some sort of 16 mil film stock or something. But, you, <laughs> you know, all of these color chips in the color checker have dancing noise now. And I this think this look is not that uncommon for, for a lot of films. Yeah. You know, where you're in yeah. the more dark and gritty. The Ursa Mini, you're getting kind of the same thing. I still feel like it's cleaner in her face. The color feels more washed out. 
I kind of feel like her skin and the background are all kind of blending together. I could see how brighter parts of the image like her skin were cleaner too in the dynamic range test when we were doing the underexposure. But overall, I think the dynamic range obviously was still better on the Amira. Yeah. But the, the uh, ISO capabilities looked a little cleaner. A little bit cleaner, yeah, a little bit cleaner on the Amira. Uh, yeah, on this Mini G2, so I just, they really did. There's a, uh, I don't know, a home run for the... Uh, <laughs> home run for the US Mini. For the little guy. <laughs> home run for the little guy. <laughs> so let's talk about these two cameras. Um, they both have very professional features, you know, SDI, in, in outputs, XLR inputs. ND filters. ND filters, all the buttons, all the features. Um, I really like that, I really like about the Ursa Mini that you can shoot all the different flavors of ProRes and RAW at multiple compression settings. Well, it's very lightweight, and mm -hmm. I mean, as a dock-style camera to carry with you on location, taking a couple of these would be a whole lot easier than taking a couple of the Amiras. I mean, you really are comparing two cameras that are trying to do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, they really are. I felt like, obvious, you know, the money does pay for something. There's more, <laughs> co there's more color separation, I think better tonality, a little bit more consistency with the Amira. So there you have it, a look at the Ursa Mini Pro 2 versus the Amira. Kind of the David and Goliath, although mm -hmm. the David and Goliath thing's gonna get even more <laughs> Goliath and more David as we move to the Amira versus the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, <laughs> <laughs> which is really, and in the middle we're gonna do one on the C200 and just see how those two compare. So take a look at those, we have other lessons coming. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, and if you're gonna buy one of these cameras, please buy it through our affiliate program. We much appreciate it and help support us here at the Sun Lens. So keep those cameras rolling and keep on clicking. <laughs>